Okay. Ooh, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, so, um, let's go ahead and get started because we have lots of beautiful stories that we are about to hear and I want to give our panelists enough time to, and space to share with us. So I'm going to get started um, by just I am going to let people introduce themselves and share whatever they would like to share. Um, so, um, I am Naomi Rogers and I live in Iowa City and I'm a person that stutters and a stuttering nerd, academic, scientist, teacher, I do all the things. Um, and I am really, really honored to be here. Um, sharing the stage really to create a platform for our friends here to share their stories. Um, and so the topic for today is intersectionality. And what I wanted to do is start with just a little bit of background on what that word means so that we have some common ground to work from. Um, and actually our friend J -J 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 Jerome Ellis laid a beautiful um, groundwork yesterday, planted some seeds for us. So, um, so the term intersectionality was coined by K -K 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 Kimberly Crenshaw, who is a black feminist civil rights activist and who's a law professor at UCLA. Um, and she was the first one who coined the term intersectionality in 1989, although the idea had been around for a long time before that, but she was really the first one that brought that term to light. Um, and so I'm gonna read a recent definition that she's provided. So she says that intersectionality is a metaphor for understanding the ways that multiple forms of inequality or d -d 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 disadvantage sometimes compound themselves and create obstacles that often are not understood among conventional ways of thinking. So as she talks about, intersectionality was originally conceived as a way for us to understand the ways that our very, like the various parts of ourselves um, become subject to oppression and discrimination. Um, and so that's gonna be a space that we can step into today to talk about the various parts of ourselves that align with that, but we can also talk about the ways that our various identities make up this beautiful part of ourselves and make us all really unique and talk about the beauty that can come along with having lots of different parts of ourselves. And so we're gonna make space for both the hard stuff, but also the beautiful stuff as well. So I hope that that's cool with everybody. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'd like to just, I guess we could, we'll, we'll kind of go down the road here, and if everybody could start just by sharing who you are, um, and I'm going to leave that open so you get to take it in whatever direction you'd like. So we'll start with you. You can't really tell your own story in this. Uh, okay, introduce first. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, my name is K -K 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 Chris Lakubar, I'm uh, first Stutters, and I also have c c c cerebral palsy. So I'm going to be talking about um, the experience of having two d d d disabilities and um, how that impacts my life. I'm also a speech therapist, and I work people with stutter, and I'm also a school speech therapist. Th th thank you so much, Crystal. Thank you. And my, my name it, it is Jia, Jia Wing, and I am a uh, Ch Chinese woman who, who stutters. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to share my, my, my journey of like growing up in China, being, being a girl who, who stutters, and, and some story of, of me when I immigrated to, to uh, America uh, as an Asian female who, who stutters. Um, so yeah, I'll share my, my story more later. Then, then, thank you so, so much. Hello, my name is Derek Daniels. I am a speech language pathologist. I'm an associate professor at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm going to share with you my story of being a person who stutters, a black man who stutters, and a gay man who stutters. Hello, my, my, my name is Amir. Uh, I am from Istanbul, Turkey. And I'm a um, data science ma 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 master de degree in E, e, Indiana University. I will talk about it later. Uh, the rest of my 
Excellent. And this is my s s s s second la language, so uh, excuse me my language if, if, if I say uh, something wrong or misunderstanding or that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is my first time to speak that from front of that, 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 that many people. It's been <laughs> So, um, yeah, so just to kind of set the stage, just knowing that um, this is a space where it's okay to be as vulnerable as we would like to take it. It's, we could be talking about some pretty hard things and just know that this is totally a safe space. And so whatever you feel comfortable sharing, um, we all have a lot to learn. Um, so yeah, maybe we could get started. Uh, Crystal, if you want to share, yeah, if you just want to share a bit of your story about what it's like to be, like, uh, to have multiple disabilities. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm anticipating being very vulnerable, so it is, it is nerve-wracking, but I'm excited and, and uh, thankful for this opportunity. Um, so like I said, I stutter and I have cerebral palsy, and I actually wrote a ch ch chapter in a b b b book about having two disabilities. The book was called S Stammering, Pride and Prejudice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to pull up I, uh, the first paragraph because I was proud of it and I think it kind of frames what I want to talk about. Let's see. Perfect. Okay. Growing up with cerebral palsy and with cystic stuttering, I got a lot of uh, uh, unwanted attention. People weren't quite sure of what to, to make of the way that I walked or talked. I often felt like people were watch, sorry, watching me, trying to figure out, figure me out. It's not every day you see a skinny little blonde girl walking on her t -t 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 toes with her left foot turned in. Neither is it all that c -c -c common to see that same girl completely blocking on her name. face all twisted and no sound coming out. They didn't know what to think or how to respond. Sometimes they would stare or laugh or do a double take. Oftentimes they still do. And I say that with a smile, but it's kind of hard sometimes. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to kind of get across um, is that having two disabilities um, is something that really makes me think about disability in general. And I think it's sort of been a blessing to kind of see that um, no matter what your disability is, you're sort of impacted very much by the fact that in general, in our society, um, there's a lot of ableism, which is the idea that if your body or your brain kind of functions a little bit differently than to typical, that's sort of as like a bad thing or less than. And um, it's 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 like the little things that we sort of pick up on, like someone's giving you a weird look when you're stuttering. I know everyone is familiar with the look. Um, sometimes they're confused about what's happening or just totally thrown off and so they look at you funny or laugh. Um, I'm sure you guys know what that feels like, but I also get that look almost on a daily basis when I'm walking. So um, cerebral palsy is a neurological disability, just like stuttering is, um, but they're a little different. The stuttering um, is also genetic and runs in families. My dad stutters too. And, um, but cerebral palsy is not something that runs in families. It's something that happens because of a accident close to birth. So I was three and a half months premature, so very, very small when I was born, and I got um, um, pneumonia when I was really, really little. So I had a, probably a lack of oxygen around that time, and just like um, the result of that was to have cerebral palsy, and it makes my muscles tight. So the, my brain is sending a message to my muscles to be tight, and the part of your brain that like shuts that message off doesn't work, so that's why why they're so tight all the time. Um, so a lot of people a ask me, people who stutter actually ask me a lot, if my cerebral palsy is like easier 
to d d deal with than my stuttering because you can't hide it. That's what they think anyway. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of people ask me that. It's so interesting because it lets me know that people don't realize that if you have a disability, everyone with a disability has an iceberg. So there are things that you can't see <laughs> that I'm either thinking or feeling or doing um, because of being a person with cerebral palsy. So um, growing up with stuttering, um, I have a very similar story to most of you, but I was very uh, uh, ashamed of it. I would um, switch my words. I, when I did see the stutter, I would get super stuck. Um, and like I said in, in my paragraph, my face would contort, I would block a lot, a lot. Um, so those are the things you could see, and the things underneath were the fear and the embarrassment and the switching words, and then not saying as much. Um, so you guys know about that, but are you guys curious about my cerebral palsy iceberg at all? Uh, so I wanted to share, um, I was thinking like, what kind of story could I tell? And yesterday, actually, when you guys were all here, I was having a moment, um, because I was so excited to come up here and introduce Jerome when he was giving his keynote. But I was a little distracted by the fact that um, there were stairs to get up onto the stage. And so I was like excitedly listening to the um, open mic, but I was also like going through, <laughs> you know, how am I gonna deal with this? Because I do struggle in the, this moment with like getting upstairs and feeling a little wobbly, and I got my fall. Um, I was like, oh, can I do it? Can I, can I do it on my own? I really want to, and I'll, I'll be embarrassed. I have to ask someone. But I was like, oh, I, got, I gotta do it. So I turned to Haley, um, my, my friend, and she said she would do it. But I did feel like, hmm, that would make it really obvious because she's not even like coming up on stage. So I was excited when John Hendrickson, <laughs> lovely John, uh, wanted to speak first. So I asked him and I thought that sort of normalized it. But then when I was thinking about this talk, I was like, it's so similar to stuttering. It's like, what if I really um, didn't feel shame? You know, how would that be different? I wouldn't have cared that there were stairs. I would be like, hey guys, isn't that stupid that there's stairs? It's not, not accessible at all. Can someone please help me? And without shame, then it would it wouldn't it wouldn't have been the same experience. Um, so today I did ask Ja and Derek to help me without shame, and I felt really good about that. Um, and then you know. <laughs> That it, like Naomi said, there is j j j j joy in these moments, um, especially when you're doing something that you were once really afraid to do. Um, with stuttering, even now, when I o o order exactly what I want and I stutter on it, um, I really feel like extreme joy <laughs> and uh, pride that I did that because for so much of my life I did. Did not. Um, I think that's an important part of the disabled experience to acknowledge because I don't think a lot of people out there in the world realize that you can have d d disabled joy. Um, and I think the same thing happens with my CP too. Uh, Chris Constantino, who edited the book that I, that I read from, um, he always he likes to tell me that his favorite part in the whole book was one thing I said about um, walking across the street to get home, because I, I work across the street at this school, and um, on an icy day, it's, it's something that's really on my mind. How am I gonna just literally cross the street? And um, it's one of those things that when I do find a stranger and ask them, if they could help me, I'm so appreciative. And I say, oh, thank you so much. And they'll say back to me, oh my God, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you, that was great, uh, and you made my day, kind of thing. Um, and I do leave, I must, in my brain, I really feel like it's like the surge of dopamine when something like that happens. Um, and I think it, it really ties into stuttering as well. Um, 
And I think the parts that are hard and the reason why um, it continues to be hard is um, the fact that disability in general is um, looked at as a negative and so it's it's a challenge you have to like do things to kind of counteract that so I've, I've worked really hard on my stuttering by doing voluntary stuttering getting connected to all you guys um, making it my whole career and uh, I'm in a really great place but with my cerebral palsy I'm really working now pretty hard to um, have a sense of pride and less shame. Um, and it's, it's, it's been pretty cool. So I've been trying to connect more with the d -d -d disability community and do more stuff around around that. Um, and like inviting you guys to, to join that as well. Um, there's this woman named J J J Judy Heyman who was the mother of the disability rights movement and I really loved her. She died recently, but I, everything she ever said, I soaked it up. And one thing she said um, when asked what was the biggest hurdle um, to change hearts and minds around d d d disability, because that was like her big thing. Towards, like she was always fighting for um, laws to be passed, to make things accessible and things like that. But towards the end of her life, she was really interested in changing people's hearts and how they thought about disability, because that's, that's the big thing right now, with stuttering too. And what she said was, the hardest thing is getting people to a a admit that they have a disability. Um, and I thought that was pretty true, because it's very, it's actually really common, about, um, they say, 20% of the population has a disability, and that includes it's not just physical disabilities, it could be anything. Um, so I work in elementary school, and um, part of what brings me so much joy in my job is, um, I guess, the experience of having two disabilities and knowing that everybody has their own iceberg. So the kids that I work with that may have dyslexia or autism or um, developmental language disability, um, I'm really trying to connect with them over like this is what you have and you're not alone and lots of other kids have this too and there's nothing to, 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 to feel ashamed of and how powerful that is. Um, so yeah, it's something I'm really passionate about right now. Um, so I started a disability club in my school and it's, it's really uh, pick it up speed. There's about like 30 kids that come um, at the Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, and I, I really feel like I, I pull on a lot of the things that we do in our community. I think we sort of led the way in many ways um, about talking openly about stuttering. I try to talk openly about their disabilities and, and give them that, to model that, that you can be like, hey, I stutter, and that's cool, you know? And they really do, like, take that in. Um, so I feel, I feel really good about that. Um, yeah, I don't know, how much more time do I have? That's good? Okay, okay. thanks for having me. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so much, Crystal, for, for, for sharing your journey. I feel like she said it with so much joy and beauty and a grace. And I know that she didn't get to that point today. It takes like years and years and years of hard work. So I, 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 I honor your, your journey and you really speak to, to my heart. Thank you. Thank you. So, what does this American woman and the Chinese woman have in common? Um, so, like every time, I just feel like when the words come comes from the heart, it transcends the cul 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 culture. I'm a fir first timer at, at France. Yeah. <laughs> 
Cool. Thank you. Um, and they didn't give us a warning. Get prepared and get some Kleenex. Yeah. I've been like crying for the first day, second day, and today I have no tears left for myself. That's a good, good, good thing. It's very emotional to, to me. It's very in, intimate to, to me, the, this con conference. When I see, see the kids, like how 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 they claim their space, how how they claim their identity. I wish the seven year old Jia from China, the kid, can 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 be trans transported to here to 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 experience this because this would save me. You know, like over three decades of living in the darkness. So I was born in China. I'm not intending to make you cry, but you know, maybe we do need clinics throughout the conference. Um, so I, 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 I was born and then grew up in, in, in China. So I was born in a small village uh, at the beginning of the 80s. So you can calculate how old I am. Um, <laughs> That's my first vulnerability, I told you. So, uh, Dr. D says, Jiao, we have to be vulnerable today. So he warned me, um, the time when I wa was born, so China just ended the cultural revolution. So, and then they placed a, a policy called the one child po policy. So my parents were the first generation ever in the Chinese history say, now there is a law telling every Chinese you are going to control your bedroom. You can only have one child. So because of that, and I was born in a village and for, for the traditional culture in China, they wanted a son. And when I was born, it was unwanted. That's why Americans, you get to adopt those beautiful Chinese female babies, which are very healthy. So, um, like fortunately or unfortunately, I was not being abandoned. Maybe I could have been here in America in a friend's conference if they abandoned me. <laughs> <laughs> so, they kept me, but at the same time, my parents, like, as long as I can remember, they sent me this message. My grandparents, they were telling me, oh, girl. Everybody is sending me this message, you're not worthy. My parents, my mom had that pressure of, of giving birth to a son and, and, and they saved for years and we live in poverty and they managed to pay a huge fine to the go government and get a second child. Luckily this time God or whatever hurt them, they did have a son, I have a brother. So since day one, like uh, as long as I was born into this world, the message wa was telling me, you are not enough because something's missing between your legs. So, <laughs> sorry, I wanna have kids here. Um, uh, so that, 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 that carrying that, like being a female child in a village who was loved, wanted, and then I, I started to, to stutter. That's add insult to, to the wound. She's not only a girl, she's a broken girl. So, and, and, and every time I feel like my parents, they have their own generational trauma to deal with. They suffered from poverty, starvation. I have like my, both of my parents' side, they have siblings that died of starvation. Um, like growing up, right, like, like you know that you are not enough, everything is not enough. The rice on the table is not enough, the meat on your plate is not enough. So like carrying almost like that, that program, like I feel this world, this re reality, it, it is a freaking scary world because you know, nothing is enough and you have to fight for everything. And that's why you shut down your emotions. 
there's not much emotions going on in a family because everybody is surviving. My stuttering was like almost the least concerned thing, so nobody talk, talks about it. But when, when ne never my 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 stutter came out, all the me message were were telling me that's really bad. I get mocked at, like my family laughed at me, my parents punished me, they beat me basically. It's called chi in China called the discipline. They beat all the child, so the kids here don't hear that. That's not good. So like like I was very traumatized in a way, but I didn't know that. I just feel like, oh, I am bad, I am broken, you know, it's all my fault of, 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 of being, being a girl. It's all, all my fault that I, I, I could not get, get my words out. How I wish I were a boy, how I wish I, I could get my words out like everybody else. So just like carry that. You said you wanted to be longer, right? Okay. So, <laughs> So just, just like carrying that burden, like navigating life, it's just you feel like you are a survivor. You have to survive every day. You have to survive everything. And there are lots of people compete with you in China. 1.4 billion people when we go to school, it's like they tell you only like 10% get to the top, the rest of you will be sacrificed. And if you end up at the bottom of the pyramid, your the rest of your life will be, you know, very bad. It's all fear driven. It's all scarcity. It's all that survival. That makes me like, in a way, I feel like I was not in, in tune with, with, with my own e experience because I was just surviving that, that, that fear, that rat race. If you don't go to school, get a good grades, like there's a million people behind you that's catching you, and that level of fear. And, and I, I do feel like it's not just me like living life like this, right? I would say most Chinese people from a lower social class live that type of life. And there's no people telling their stories. All you hear the propaganda is China is the greatest country on this planet. I believed it. I believed that I, I lived in heaven. I shouldn't be complaining, even though inside I was like surviving, but they were telling us this is the best, the safest country, you know, you should be proud of being a Chinese, being a, proud of being part of this communism, whatever. So carry the, like a lot of like those big grand things, but at the same time inside, I feel very broken. And I think that's all my fault. Um, and then kind of like navigate life and just uh, conform to everything. I was like, not be able to speak for myself for every little stuff. Of course, I have to hide my stutter. Of course, I have to keep my head down. Of course, you just like have to be like everybody else because there is not enough things to fight for your life. And I came to a point I was so miserable. Like like I I, I conform to every social norms. What a Chinese girl should look like. What a Chinese girl should behave what society wanted you to be, and I never said no. I always kept my, my head down because I know I'm broken. And if, if I don't put on a front, they do not even, I do not even deserve a job. I do not even deserve food on my table. So, why you guys are not crying? <laughs> <laughs> you need cleanliness. Inside, right? Okay. Uh, sorry to make it a little bit like like too heavy, but 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 like I when I hear like Crystal's like journey, right? Like right now today, I I said that like all all this experience with a certain level of clarity, with a certain level of like oh you put words to to describe your experience, but I know those nights like when you living in this like world with, with yourself, that feeling of brokenness, that like, why I cannot be like everybody else? 
why talking has to be so hard. My parents ask me every day, why talking is so hard to make to 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 to, to you? You just sing, you just sing, and then you speak. Everybody can do that. Three year old can do that. Why can't you do that? So, still till today, if I call my Chinese pair 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 her parents. I could not fall asleep the night before because I know that they, they, they would still judge my, my, my stutter. If I, I, I stutter on, on, on the phone, they still hang up my phone, get your words together and then call us. It's just like so, sometimes I feel like me and China, there is a great wall between us, like literally. So, and fortunately, like there, there's a, turn in this story, right? So um, that's why to me, I feel like America did give me a second chance. I'm not trying to like, like say that as a cheesy way, but um, it's very, first it's very hard to, 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 to get out, out of China. So many pe people want to get ahead of their life. So it take me years like pre prepare all, almost like my trend, trend Tran transition to the out outside the world. Fortunately, like uh, I learned it, English, it, it gave, gave, gave me like a, another tool to, to get con con connect to the world besides my Chinese. Because every time I, I stutter, my stutter got punished. Immediately feedback from the environment. Don't do that, that's a broken way. And every time I express my vulnerability, there is like a negative feedback. So, like I feel very like trapped in my own own voice, and I have a lot to to say and I have a lot to to share. But because of, of that fear, because of those beatings since you were three, you got really really scared. So when I came to uh, uh, America for grad school, did I go to oh, 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 over time? But yeah, okay. So let, let let me just like that's a problem when when you give up people who 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 start a a stage or just use it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, when I came to the 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 states, I the first thing I seek for help is to find somebody who fix this. Fix 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 the, the, the stuttering. I, I went to my first speech therapy when I was 32. And my therapists were telling me, Dr. Merson, I remember his name, Royal Oak, Michigan. He said, John, there is no cure. I was like, what? There's no cure? What are you talking about? You guys are America, the number one in the world. What, what guys have you been doing all these years? You're just wasting taxpayers' money and not making breakthroughs. What do you mean? You know? So I was like crushed. What do you mean? You know, I feel broken. I came to America for, for a fix. So that's the beginning of my journey. That's from shame to acceptance. Right now I'm still on, on a journey, but I know that my, my deepest su suffering, my deepest, deep, 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 deepest shame, it's actually the driving force of my past. So I did change my, my, my career. I was in a education before, and now I'm in a speech language per pathology. And after I did my, take me years to, to, to change, switch my car, career. And after I did my master's, we only have one fluency course. One, two years of program, and I do two years of postdoc. Dr. D is the first professor who ever started I've met. And he was my professor. I'm like, what? <laughs> you can start in a field professor? Which world am I living in? Because in China, the entire time, 1.4 billion people have never, ever seen a person in authority position who stutters. Everybody hides their vulnerability. Everybody suffers from that silence. So he inspired me to, to, to be on, on this journey. So right now I'm a first year doctoral student 
in Michigan State uh, University study staggering. This is. <laughs> This is the first time I feel like in my life, I don't have to hide that I'm a Chinese woman. I don't have to hide the fact that I stutter. In this room, I look different, but I am okay that I look different. But I know inside, we, we, we feel the same. Thank you. appreciate opportunities for me to talk about my story because I rarely get a chance to talk about myself. I really get a chance to tell my story. So um, I think it empowers me when I do share my story, but there's also a little bit of vulnerability and anxiety associated with it because I think when you grow up um, feeling very different, um, sometimes it can be, very, can be very, very difficult to talk about your story. But um, I would probably say growing up, I was a very, very different person on the inside than I projected on the outside. So most people don't know this. I've never said this or said this publicly, but um, when I was growing up, I experienced a lot of traumas, lots of childhood traumas. Um, I, wouldn't have, I would not have called them traumas then, but working with a therapist, I could now say that those were traumas. Um, I experienced a lot of um, um, verbal, traumas when I was growing up, so um, I was always you know, told what I was not doing right or always told what I was doing wrong. So um, I think those verbal traumas affected how I see myself now. Even now it's still hard to accept compliments or when someone is saying something good that I'm doing, it could be hard to accept that because of you know, those verbal traumas that I experienced when I was growing up. I'll tell you a story. Um, when I was in the third grade, I was on a baseball team, a little league baseball team, and I didn't want to play baseball, but I had to play baseball. So we were practicing out on the field, and um, I was a little bit nauseous. I was feeling sick. I wasn't feeling well. So um, I walked up to one of the coaches, who was actually a family member of mine, and I said, I'm not feeling well. And he said, you get back out there and you play. So, um, that was probably one of the earliest memories, not the first, but probably one of the earliest times that I was made to feel that how I felt did not matter, that I had to sacrifice myself for the sake of the team. So um, I experienced lots of contradictions when I was growing up. So there was a contradiction between how I talked and how I was supposed to talk. You're supposed to not stutter. You're supposed to be a fluent person. You're supposed to speak with confidence. And I stuttered. And people um, pointed that out. So that was a big contradiction. You're a person who stutters, but I was always made to feel that I should not stutter. There was also a contradiction between, um, I think, my temperament. I was a very sensitive, very compassionate person. But the way that I grew up, when you're a man, you're supposed to be tough. You're supposed to not show vulnerability, not show emotion, not show tears. I was actually told boys do not cry. So there's this contradiction between my temperament and how I was supposed to be. There is a contradiction between um, my culture. So um, as a black person, we have certain cultural traditions in terms of dialect, how we talk, um, the foods you eat, those types of things. But you know, some of the schools that I went to I was made to feel that my culture was really a bad culture. And then probably the hardest contradiction for me was how I was supposed to love versus how I wanted to love. So um, this always gives me, um, this always vulnerability um, attached with saying that I'm a gay person. Growing up in the religion that I grew up in, being gay was like the gum underneath, underneath a person's shoe. It was the worst thing in the world to be. So I concealed, I passed, I adjusted, I assimilated, I didn't date. Any, all of those experiences that teens have when they, when they date and you know, all those things, I never had any of those experiences. So um, I think you know, I experienced 
homophobia, I experienced racism, I experienced ableism. So all of those things, I think, really affected how I saw myself. But eventually, um, I began to find spaces that accepted my identities. I found spaces where I could be myself. So Friends, for example, in the National Starving Association, those were spaces where I felt like I could be myself as a person who stood others. But even still, because of my identity as a black man and my identity as a gay person, um, in some ways I still feel like an outlier because I'm not around people who have those same types, types of experiences. So I think um, intersectionality is really important. I'm glad we're talking about this because we all have common experiences around stuttering, but our experiences can be influenced by the different identities that we have. So I think it's important for all of us to understand um, how complex we are. It's important for all of us to understand um, the different types of experiences that we can have as people who stutter, because I think the more we tell our stories, um, hopefully more spaces will open up for other people to share their stories and we can you know, begin to embrace ourselves for who we are. So I'm really nervous right now, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really uh, uh, excited for today, and uh, I really thank you to this 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 uh, conference. Uh, uh, I this this is my s second time to he be here, and last time I was uh, um, it was really helped me to see me, 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 many people to you know who like me. Uh, I can um, let me talk about my childhood since we were that way. Um, uh, I was had similar the uh, boy boy problems. Uh, P P P like children usually make fun of the other kids situation that's so common with I think the boys uh, versus girls. Um, so the 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 that situations like I I feel like I was always like if I kind of was if I sorry. So start uh, from beginning. Uh, to Turkish, it's uh, uh, actually it is you can switch the verbs like not like English like uh, you don't have to say subject and I play or I am playing and that kind of rules. So you can actually play around. So you 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 can put the uh, verb first and subject. Then that that's very good for us. You know the play. <laughs> um, so I was like, if I have some, you know, to uh, fair words, I was like putting uh, word words, and you know, I was playing with uh, that that kind of stuff, and I was basically uh, uh, hiding it, and I had like very long time, but uh, I was like usually trouble kids in situation because I was like fighting and stuff so much, and I break two times my nose and that kind of stuff because I now I felt like. I was doing that because I was just trying to be tough and trying to be not to be to make fun of that kind of situation. So that those uh, to, to traumatic situations that actually I don't recommend since there are so many kids here because that's build up fear when you come 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 certain age. It is like. Um, you fear so much, and it's like break that so so harder than if I didn't do it. Um, so one of the my I mean there's thousands I mean, millions of them probably, but one of the I I remember to I was like um, kind of cl cl close to graduate my bachelor degree, and I was like I studied uh, econometrics, and I was thinking. At that time, I was gonna, you know, work at bank and that, that kind of stuff. And I, 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 I haven't seen any banker who who is a stutter. So that's uh, one time I never re uh, forget this, and I probably mentioned a couple of times. Uh, there is some small transportation buses still in uh, Istanbul. You know, like kind of small ta taxi, but multiple pe people can use it. Um, you know, like you, when you get in there, you know, you pay in cash usually, and you, you just say to, I'm gonna, can you leave me here? 
give me this corner and stuff. And I, I got in with my father and um, when I got in, you know, I want, to, I want to say to which station we gonna uh, leave or get off. Uh, and I stuttered so bad, like I was blocking so bad. And probably all of a sudden know this feeling like my father told me what happened to you kind of Christian to me. I was like sweating so much, like cold sweating and you know, that was like, I was like feeling like, oh, I did so big mistake, kind of feel like good about myself. And it was always thinking, well, oh, you, you could take with it or you, uh, that's kind of, I don't think it's the thing at all. Like we are not started because we don't know how to breathe. So that's not, I think, uh, uh, situation. So eventually that built up that tension so much and I came here for uh, learning language and because of it's it is english and you have to use subject first you know i cannot change that and i severe blocks and i was like so and i was working at bar at, at that time i was server this kind of situation and i was always comparing myself there's one more server with me and i was always like i was like getting confident let's go i can do it like every table i can do like, let's go we can do this we can do this like like those, I mean, I, I am tired, I'm working like nine hours, I'm trying to push myself, let's go. And only purpose not to study. And I was like so tired if, if I, and also I really recommend to whoever stutters, I was writing a journal at that time. And one of the reason, not because of studying, I was trying to uh, improve my e e English uh, writing skills, but also it helped me to like talking with myself and I had a, had no had uh, no friends in uh, Chicago at that time. It's not really so many to, to Turkish people either. Um, eventually, I was you know like writing that journal that one or one and a half years. I was like writing like eight notebooks. I I finish it like I just write it down. You know all the time same thing actually. I I just read uh, a couple weeks ago. I mean, since I know I want to come here, I want to refresh myself and my progress and stuff. And it's kind of, you know, every day, same situation. I want to be speak this way. I take care of your speech. You can, like, you can do this and fail. You can do this and fail. Because I'm trying to be fluent. And it's impossible to, for us to, you can do this. And I mean, you, you guys also say the same thing. There is no solution for that. And that couple years i was like trying to fix my speech which is of course i i couldn't um and i actually i saw to in the turkish one facebook page they were studying to i mean they do like some one writer techniques in turkey and i saw that book and i said oh i was going to buy in turkish one and I asked them, you know, where, where, where can I buy this? And they say, oh, they always they publish in US first. Why you don't buy that one? And I, I didn't know that. And I got that um, uh, study, um, what was it? To an aid therapist advice for who stutter or something, if I don't mistake mistaken. Uh, actually, I, 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 I started to do um, some volunteer stuttering firstly, just when I go to, you know, the grocery store, just saying, when I was leaving, just say, I'm not even look at them, I, I, I just say, you know, thank you, and that's it. My, like, all my, what, 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 what I did was just one single one, one reputation and go. And it was so challenging at, at that time, to be honest. But that was the first step as I, uh, for myself. And I keep going, I did speak with strangers when I go to school, I talk with strangers and stuff. And, you know, and I improved to my uh, desensitization, no, I, I said quite. Um, um, I improve my, I, you know, I decline my desensitization. Yeah. Um, so eventually I got better about uh, my, myself, not stuttering, I just better about my reaction of my, my, my stuttering. And actually, um, 
yeah that's the actually i want to also say i think for stutter like i'm not sure that i'm talking about myself um you know each techniques maybe for each person effect different way uh, i i'm a, i don't know that it's just it's my idea subjective um it's like um i think like when we read in at home if there's no 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 one else usually we are mostly not stutter as i mean for myself like we are more fluent than in front of people and even it is obviously like that whatever i use techniques like do easy onsets or that this didn't help me personally because i i think most of my stuttering come from from fearing of the words and attacking that part just make me um now i'm not trying to be fluent just i only we need to change i think just uh, reaction of what what we, we do for stuttering otherwise you you will you best talk about the disabling them stuff um is stuttering considered disabled right now or no somebody somehow yes yeah okay um it is i think it is is a it, it is kind of like our physical um how the how we look or how we you know physical skills it is just how we speak i trying to believe and i trying to force my me it's not i'm not sometimes i go very um if i don't practice if i don't do like my uh, design subsidization increase so that's why i think we 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 have to know what what to react to our stuttering first of all if you know if you do that you mostly after that i think you feel so much better about yourself if you want to use techniques that's okay too but i'm saying i think without accepting ourselves for personally never in which none of techniques uh can uh help me help me like one of the for example thing is i was reading book about stuttering and that's that says so oh, speak slowly and i say oh i want maybe that that's the right thing to do because you know he was saying like fancy words like if you rabbits run faster you have to catch that kind of phrase <laughs> and i say oh yeah maybe i'm speaking so fast but i know when i focus to oh maybe i should slow down my especially in turkish because in english i'm unconscious or consciously slower than turkish um in turkish i'm speaking very fast like one sentence like very quick sometimes when i i think do i speak fast because of or i am stutter because i am speaking fast in turkish or i am stutter i that's why i'm speaking fast uh because i want to get get it off i realize that i just want to get that word out if i'm like so cautious about stuttering i'm just trying to get it off and i stutter it's kind of like both way the the the, the direction so it's yeah that's uh i think just recommending it's accepting ourselves only to think that we can have to do and side things um modification or, or um the techniques that's also didn't help me personally but i mean i would like i mean whatever it helps for individual person because i um i think i accepted myself to that's Best, uh, best technique for me, and uh, I should all, all, also say, don't drop to um, like when even the voluntary studying, you don't leave it. I did once. I was like six months, seven months. I was like I dropped the voluntary studying. I say, you know what? I am okay. I don't need to do because I I already accepted. But we are human, and we sometimes forget where we came from how what was the progress and our ego is that feeling you are plan 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 which is you are not i mean originally but you avoiding more 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 situations and it build up sensitive 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 sensitivis, okay sensitization yeah uh it was a story it just uh, how can i say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah that's build up more so that's why i think the practice um and we have to accept ourselves as so there's there's no other
after a shock, there's no other option. So, yeah, thank you. So, um, <laughs> I need to thank you for, um, thank you all so much for sharing your stories. You know, with that, uh, we all learn so much, and so I just really appreciate the vulnerability and like stepping in, leaning in, and sharing with us. Um, it was really, really meaningful. Um, I am kind of conscious of time just because we are a little bit behind, so. open it up to audience q and I think, because um, I would love to hear what's on people's minds. Um, Barry. Yes. Uh, first of all, oh my God, what an amazing uh, foursome of stories. I think, I think we're all blown away. I have a question for Derek. Um, so much of the language that we use as people who stutter are borrowed from from both both communities that you come from. Um, the language of passing has been used by black Americans forever. And um, the word passing and a, a coming out and um, pathologizing have been used in terms of LGBTQ people. And I'm wondering, how those overlapping concepts have informed the way that you've thought about how your black and gay and stuttering identities um, work work in in synergy with each other. Yeah, I think um, it certainly helps to inform the experience, like the terms. Um, like coming out and passing um, from the LGBTQ, LGBTQ literature certainly have informed um, and provides an understanding for what it might be like for stuttering. So um, I think sometimes um, when you're trying to communicate what an experience feels like, sometimes the language from another community can help to inform what that might feel like. So um, I think, um, you know, when I'm, trying to process my experience as a person who stutters, um, I think the language of the LGBTQ plus community can be helpful in um, helping others to understand. People understand or know the term coming out. They know what coming out means um, from the LGBTQ plus community. So when you're trying to explain stuttering and what it might be like to maybe disclose for the first time that you're a stutterer, that term might be useful to help other people understand what the experience feels like. So um, I think sometimes those terms help tie the experience together and it can help other people understand what it feels like for me if we use a term that they're familiar with already. Is that fair? So my message is also to Derek. I think we had talked, he was at our table. Um, I know you're an associate professor, um, but I think it's so important for young African-American kids to see people who look like them who stutter. Uh, because you know when we started this journey with Lee now, almost uh, 10 years ago, I think, she was always a proponent of making sure that diversity, but also people um, African Americans. She actually said, Ken, you guys need to bring more black people to these conferences. Um, and so it's good to see so many more diverse, you know, background. Um, I think that the reason I say that is that when we come to friends, everyone is the same, right? Everyone has the same struggle. But kids can't be what they can't see, right? And so I think it's important. So my question is, I know you teach at a at a college level. 
how do you uh, make sure you also expose yourself to kids, young kids, so that way uh, they get a chance to um, fortify or re-fortify their belief in themselves when they say, hey, I'm 12, 13, but I see what I can be. I see somebody who looks like me and see someone who, who has um, ascended to the highest level, who, highest levels, um, who's also you know a young person with stutters. So how do you also make sure that you're giving back to the community in which you, uh, you come from, sir? Yeah. So I think um, I'm everywhere. So <laughs> I'm at Friends, I'm at the National Stuttering Association, I'm at Camp Shout Out, I'm part of lots of virtual platforms. I try whenever I can to make myself available because I know how important that is. Like um, I, let's see, can count on one hand how many black pro professors I had when I was going through school. So undergraduate, master's, and PhD. Um, let's see, probably four. Only four professors of color I, I, I've had. So I, I know how important that is to um, see yourself represented. So, um, you know, I, um, see children um, at our speech and hearing clinic at Langston University. Um, I, try and make myself, I try and make myself available um, wherever I can um, so that other children who stutter um, you know, can see me. I think increased representation and having a diversity of voices and a diversity of experiences is very important. So wherever I can and wherever I'm able, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to be out there for kids who stutter. Uh, hello, um, my question is for G. Um, when, you, when you finish your PhD, where do you plan to go and what goals do you hope to achieve? Thank, thank you so much. You're basically trying to ask me if there's a better country in America? <laughs> the answer is no, right? Yeah. I think the, where is the best place? It's not a geographic concept. It's a place you feel that you you are yourself. You don't have to hide anything. I think at this moment, I feel this is my home. I feel that this is a place I want to be. So, like right, right, right now, I do feel like I have this obligation, almost like because I suffered being a female who stutters, gets zero support, and I have this obligation. I have access to the knowledge bank of the 100 years of stuttering research. When I was accessing those research papers, like I have mixed feelings. On the one hand, I feel like, wow, people already written about my experiences. Those people are from different cultures, from different countries, but they described my inner experiences so deeply. I feel very touched, but at the same time mad because I'm thinking, if I don't get access to this library, people who stutter, we don't have access to our story. They tell our story better than the people who have the first-hand experience. And unfortunately, we, we live in a human society that has, has hierarchy, that you have to almost like move to a level to have a level of voice. Because I came from the ground and I understand, you know, that's inaccessible to resources, that's unfairness, that's injustice. So like, I am like trying to do some stuttering uh, awareness uh, work with, with the Chinese community because that falls on me. There's, you know, no better people like I do this work. I do host like uh, support meetings for the Chinese uh, com community, and I do feel, uh, feel like someday, right, if, if I feel I'm ready, I want to bring this not just back to China, but like to Asia. A lot of countries, they need this type of information. Like yesterday when I was at, at that advocacy panel as a listener, People were saying, like, why Amer America that so many SLPs are not educated, or like, why we just have such a small group? To me, as a listener, sometimes I'm thinking, 
you guys are actually doing fine. <laughs> yeah. You have a place, right? Even though it's not accessible to all people. But think of that, I still see America as this, you know, you guys are still at, at if I'm a human from outer space, I want to find a place to, to, to see the best of this planet. I still feel like I have more faith in America than a lot of Americans themselves, because I feel like I, I see it as a different perspective. But I do feel like sometimes I was very scared of going back to, to China because I feel like I was five again when I was talking to, to my friends in, in chi Chinese. I still feel that oppression is so deep in my blood. I lost my voice since I, I was five. So I'm going to do some work. Definitely I'm going to 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 stuttering what will, 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 will be, be be my work. And I do think that like stu stuttering that this con connects to, to Crystal's point. And yesterday at the advocacy panel, like George and, and, and John talk about the importance of disability. I used to hate that word. I'm like, what do you mean, you know, like disability? Like why you put that label, right? Disability means you are not complete. You are not like beautiful or you're not, yeah, you are less. I was so scared of being put into this basket. But that's lack of education, right? Because I took a disability class this semester and the instructor at the first class, he, she said something that hit me so hard. She said, at one point of each of this human life, we all, every single one of us, is going to lose some bodily function or mental function we are doomed to become disabled or experience a level of disability. It's just a matter of time. Nobody escapes. So that hit me so hard, right? Like before, I don't want to do with stuttering or disability, but that hit me hard. And, and I do think like that's human vulnerability, right? Like, like that human, we see it as weakness, but it's a vulnerability. That's, unites us all. We are all in this shit together, every one of us. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too many words. But, 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 but I definitely feel like, you know, I want, it's like, this is a conference, I feel like I, I can pour my heart, like I, I receive energy by, by giving out my, 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 my truth. I'm not afraid. So maybe this is a long, uh, answer to your que question, but never bound yourself to put yourself into a box. There's like time and space is just a concept where you feel that moment, you feel that you are me, you feel alive, that's home. Thank you. That was a mic drop moment, so we're gonna end there. Um, <laughs>